why does a leader entrepreneur even have to care about being socially responsible and whatnot? As companies, as entrepreneurs, we play an important role in society. If we do not care for each other, who, who will? I'm really excited about this episode because over the past year or two, or even several years, I know for me, I've really been seeing a rise in what I'm calling the conscious leader and conscious leadership. And that is a rise and a, a continuing trend around entrepreneurs and business owners and managers that are taking on businesses or creating businesses that I would deem as far more socially responsible, a strong sense of corporate responsibility and heart centered and values based and all of those other things. And so I wanted to, in my quest to find out more for myself personally and professionally, I came across a friend of mine, Alex, and uh, Alex will go into his own introduction here. But if there's anybody that embodies a conscious leader and somebody that is a proponent of conscious leadership and uh, social justice and things like that. And it, it's, it's Alex. And I want to be clear the differentiation here in that I'm not talking about social justice warriors. I'm not talking about keyboard warriors. I'm not talking about cancel culture. I'm talking about an environment that is created that is empowering and it's about affecting positive change in the world around us. Again, as I said, you really embody what it is that is conscious leadership and you have a number of initiatives and which we'll get into here shortly. So Alex, where do we get started with yourself? But first of all, thank you very much for the kind introduction, Daryl. I, I wouldn't consider myself like embodying all of these elements that you just mentioned. Um, there's always room um, for improvement and, and, and things you can do differently and better th than we already do. But um, I, I agree to a, certain, to a certain point with you that I am not running my business as a force for just for making profit. Um, I'm always asking myself, how can I use my business um, as a lever to make this world a better place? And this often goes in, in weird directions that I, that I haven't seek out in the first place. So if I believe that we all as entrepreneurs, we do have a responsibility toward society, toward doing not only well, but also doing good, doing the right things and running our business in the least harmful way on the one hand. So when it comes to resources that we consume and then also using it in the best possible way to bring about positive change for people that are less fortunate and can't bring about that change for themselves necessarily. I love your uh, humbleness because obviously it's a journey, right? You know, we're not talking, okay, finally I'm conscious and I'm now like good for the world. Yay. I've arrived that sort of thing. So I appreciate that. You know, and at the end of the day, why does it really matter, Alex? Because, you know, we've got all sorts of volunteer organizations that are fired up to handle all of that, you know, touchy feely tree hugging stuff, right? Let's, uh, let's drive profit and let's make lots of money because isn't that what drives the economy? So why does it even matter? I think, was it two or three years ago when the business, the American business round table actually said that businesses should not only focus on shareholder value. And when you, when you know about the business round table, these are organizations like BlackRock. Like, I mean, we're talking, the evil capitalists, right? They're not evil capitalists. They're just socialized in a certain way and they have their history and other companies have a different history. The thing is this conglomerate of huge, powerful corporations has publicly accepted and announced that shareholder capitalism is a thing and that uh, sorry, that stakeholder capitalism is a, is a thing and that the old paradigm of shareholder value is practically dead because we've realized that as organizations, not everyone is better off if everyone takes care of themselves. That's just a myth. And we've overcome that um, paradigm, fortunately enough, in large degrees and large parts of the organization of, of, of society. And as companies, as entrepreneurs, we play an important role in society. If we do not care for each other, who, who will? I mean, do we want to leave 
saving the environment to governments? Good luck with that. They do their part. They do whatever they can. But they, they, they are fighting an impossible fight when, when they're on their own. So governments can only create the framework. NGOs, individuals, and us as entrepreneurs and organizations, we need to just take charge of what we are in charge and decide consciously how we want to use the power that we have, how we want to use our voices and, um, and bring about positive change. And the same is true for social justice. The same is true for creating e equity and equality in, in society. It's not only about the environment, even if I'm very passionate about environmental protection, but it's not only that. Um, those grand questions of our time, they're strongly inter interlinked. You will not achieve social justice without talking about the environment and vice versa. So that, that's why I believe we do have a responsibility as organizations. And it's sometimes as simple as asking yourself, what am I passionate about beyond my business? And how can I use my business in order to support that? And it's, it's as simple as that. We're not talking about saving the world. We're not talking about every individual entrepreneur needs to build something that is so huge and grand that, that they will be remembered for hundreds of years. Not what we talk about. Small incremental change brings just, you know, like, like putting a penny into your bank account every day, just the compound interest that it creates. That's what I'm talking about. This ripple effect that we can, can all start in our environment. I, I, I love that. And as you were talking there, I'm thinking, you know, in terms of the energy and the, the consciousness of the world and, and uh, rising tide raises all ships and all of those cliches. And I reflect on my own leadership journey. And I remember when I was young, it was binary to me. I didn't have a sense for anything social. I thought if you are not working, go get a job, mm. like two arms, two legs and all of those things. And the environment, don't worry, we've got lots of it. Uh, you know, I'm Especially in Alberta in here. Yes, you know, that's exactly. So I had a very myopic and binary view of that. And fortunately, as I've gotten slightly older and I've reached a certain level of, of success personally and spiritually and all the rest of it, I find myself really reflecting on these, these types of questions. And I appreciate you coming on and I'm able to surround myself with people like-minded individuals, but I do realize that we still have a long ways to go with this, but I really like the fact that this isn't about a sweeping change overnight. You know, it didn't take us, it wasn't overnight to get us here and it's not going to be overnight here, but I appreciate what you're saying because it can be really, really daunting. And it, it reminds me of a quick story. I was traveling back from Hartford and I was uh, sitting next to a gentleman from the UN and uh, he said something really interesting in that. He said, you can really tell a lot about the quality of a society by how it treats its vulnerable and its environment. And I really, you know, that stuck with me all of these years. And so that has led me down this path to, to talk to you today, Alex. And so, you know, apart from the fact that figure out what you're passionate about, you know, obviously know thyself and figure out you know, where you want to contribute. What else, what's something else an entrepreneur could do? And then we'll talk about your, your amazing opportunity here after that. I think the moment you ask yourself the question, how can I use my business? to not only do well, but also do good. If you ask that question, you never get it out of your head again. It's impossible to unthink the question. And, and then you're like, huh, do I really have? Yeah, I should. I mean, if you ask yourself this question, you realize all of a sudden, the moment you make enough money, whatever enough means for you, the moment you have mental capacity to think in different ways. You, Make money a non-issue, put it off the table, have enough to uh, provide for yourself and your family and live the life you want to live by all means. And then think about what's next. How can I use my very, very short existence on earth to do something that is just not about me, myself and I. It's just for others, for the bigger picture, for the greater good, for society, for the environment, maybe just for the community around the corner. And it starts with small things like giving back financially or volunteering or 
just sponsoring a local youth sports team. And, and the opportunities are endless. You can go from there in every direction, organize um, beach cleanups, stuff like that, right? There are so many organizations out there that, that need volunteers, that need people with vision, with, um, with a helping hand that they j just reach out and, and, and say, hey, here I am, what do you need? What can I do? You don't necessarily even need to come up with something yourself. You can just approach um, NGOs um, and ask them, what do you guys need? How can I help? How can I support what's important here? And start to educate yourself around these causes. Um, when I came to Canada, I had no idea about the huge issue that um, was, was issue is a, is a nice word. The trauma that was caused to indigenous communities through the um, through the residential school system. I've never heard about that before. I mean, how would I? It's not even a topic Canadians talk about. How would I know when I didn't even live here? So I came here, I heard about it, and I was like, okay, what's that? And I just became curious. It doesn't necessarily mean that I have a solution to the problem. Who am I? I'm just an immigrant who came here. I have no clue about it, but I can start to educate myself and be conscious about how I interact with these communities and how I make space in my own life and in the lives of the people I interact with to learn and, and do things differently in the future. That's what you can do. And you don't have to be an entrepreneur in order to do that. That's just human, I would say. <laughs> I, I love that because when people think about, or I, I think the, the uh, stereotype is, well, I don't have money to donate or whatever that is, or, you know, the, the Bezos of the world putting millions of dollars or whatever, any of that stuff. Um, but time, you know, and I would argue time is a very valuable resource for oh, yeah. everybody. And, uh, for me, I've been in volunteer sectors for over 30 years and I wouldn't think about doing anything except that. And, and one last point on this, Alex, and, uh, because this is something that really resonates with me. One of the, the, the things I tell my son and, and I tell myself about raising him is at the end of the day, I don't care what he does. I want him to be a contributing member of society. And at the end of the day, put more into society than you take out. And if we're all doing that, then holy smokes, this world will be a much, much better place. And so that's kind of my North star for, for you know, parenting. Totally and that. so, Alex, thank you for your time. And I would be remiss if I didn't talk. And when I talk about embodiment of, you know, the things we've talked about, the upcoming summit is a good example of that. And so, Alex, would you like to spend a few minutes and telling the audience what the summit is all about and how they can register and all those other things? Yeah, and I'll put uh, links in the description as of well. Of course. I mean, you're talking about the legacy event. That's the title, legacy, the premier strategic business event, as we call it. It's a three-day event that um, airs on the 1st, 2nd, and 3rd of February. And it is three days packed with knowledge and insight. So there are 15 speakers per day um, that contribute their insight on day one, on building businesses that have an impact on society, a positive impact that change things um, in a positive way. We talk to ecopreneurs who who are kind of the next generation of environmental activists and at the same time build profitable businesses around their ideas of preserving the environment. And we talk to all kinds of entrepreneurs and, and people that stand for topics of conscious leadership. How do I make society more, more, um, more open so that everyone can have a fair share of what's there? On day two, we then talk about how can I not only build businesses for impact, but actually make money with them. So day two is all about building profitable businesses. We talk to Harvard professors about value creation and value capture, to um, pricing veterans about um, how can I actually price my products and services in a way that they create additional value on the client side and on my side. And on day three, we talk all the things entrepreneurship Mental health and, and physical health are often things that, that we neglect. We work too much. We love what we do. We put too much work in it. We neglect that it has a toll sometimes. So we talk, what, what, how can we actually be more productive? Not in a sense that how can we use 18 days an hour and put even more work in, but how can we get 18 days, 18 hours done in, uh, in less time? 
and how can we prioritize our mental health and our physical health in order to be in a, in a state physically and mentally to run our businesses for the long run. It's not just a sprint. Being an entrepreneur is a marathon. If you want to be successful, overnight success is always created over 10 years. So that I, I love that. And so basically what you're saying is you can have both. You can have profit and impact and, and they're not exclusive. They're not separate anymore. And through the summit uh, with the, the speakers of which I am one, but that's not you know, the purpose of this conversation. Uh, <laughs> but through, through, through the three days, you will, you'll see a roadmap and all sorts of different perspectives. So I would highly, highly, highly recommend folks register again. It's free. Uh, there are some other opportunities to work with Alex moving forward and proceeds going to a couple of amazing causes as well. So yeah, look for that in summit. We don't make money with it. This, this is really important for, for me also that people understand that this is, and, and you are part of that journey on day one. Everyone who contributes, there's no, no speaker has been paid. Everyone contributes their work for free. And there's tons of other things that you can get your hands on. So join us. All the proceeds go to environmental protection and to childhood cancer research. And this is, these are the two things that I'm super passionate about. And I'm trying to use my business to create that ripple in this direction. Oh man, I love it. I love it. Well, best of luck on that journey. We will be talking again. And so remember February 1st through 3rd, 2022 at the time of this, and uh, you will not regret it. I can promise you that. So Alex, thank you very much for taking the time out of your busy day. I know you're, it's the ramp up into the Legacy Summit. So thanks for, for your time. Hey, thanks so much for your support, Daryl. I really appreciate it.